All right, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we're going to discuss uh, further into infinite limits uh, using the precise definition. And in this video, I'm going to do an example on this. My earlier video, I went over the precise definition of infinite limits. I'll just recap this uh, here quickly. I'm not going to go over too much, so make sure to watch the video in the video link below. But basically, the definition goes, let f be a function defined on some open interval. Number open uh, interval doesn't have to include the endpoints. You see more on this in the video link below on open and closed intervals. And basically this open interval contains a number a except possibly at a, so it doesn't have to be defined at a. Then the limit as x approaches a of f of x is infinity, so this is how you would write it. And this means that for every positive number m, there is a positive number a delta such that f of x is greater than m whenever you have this interval where absolute value of x minus a is greater than zero and less than delta. So basically what this definition is saying is that as you're getting closer and closer to this a within this delta range, then you're basically always going to be greater than this m, which is dependent on delta. Well, um, uh, you can see this more on this in the video link, but I'm not going to go over too much, but uh, once, once you go over the video, it's pretty straightforward why this is true. So now let's go over the example. And now the example states, well, prove that the limit x as x approaches 0 of 1 divided by x squared is infinity here. Well, you could see this as you put, dividing by 1 divided by really small numbers, it's going to go higher and higher. So obviously when you go to zero, it's going to go to infinity. But to prove it using the precise definition, so if we use uh, this, basically all we have to do is try to get it in the form of this right here. If fx greater than m, whenever you have this case here. So to prove this one precisely, so we need to find, yes, yeah, so we need to find delta, which is number, it's greater than zero because it's a positive number. This is a positive number, which is greater than zero. This one is also a positive number. So find delta, which is greater than zero, if we're given, so first we're given that m is greater than zero, let's say we're given this one. So if m is greater than zero, uh, find m given that m is greater than zero, such that, yeah, in this case, we know our f of x can be one divided by x squared, so now we have one divided by x squared, using the precise definition, greater than, I mean greater than m, not uh, zero right here, so it's greater than m whenever, yeah, whenever now we have the new interval, because we're just trying to make it look like the precise definition, and that would be our proof. So x minus 0 now, less than delta. So we got to find this delta right here. This is our new a, and this is our, basically, our f of x right here. Yeah, and to prove this, we just have to find this delta here. So we have to show that there's always a delta exists whenever we're given this m, m is greater than 0, such that you have this case here. So now if we just uh, simplify this one, we're going to have this is 0 less than, well, absolute yeah, absolute value of x less than this delta right here. We just write it like that, get rid of the, the 0 out of there. Now what we could do is actually uh, rearrange uh, this part right here. And, and to do that, we just have to uh, times x squared on both sides. So we do this and this on x squared on both sides, and divide by m on both sides, and divide by m, so we're not changing anything. So then, as you can see, these will cancel, and then this m's will cancel. We're going to be left with, actually, x squared is less than this 1 divided by m right here. And whenever you have this condition right here, uh, 0 less than absolute value of x, uh, less than delta right here. So now in this one here, if we take the square root of both, uh, both sides right here, we're going to actually have absolute value of x, is less than this uh, 1 divided by square root of m right here. This absolute value uh, here, you can see the video link below on uh, on absolute value and their properties. Basically, I just want to quickly recap. If you have y equals x squared, then if you're taking the square root, the absolute value of, I mean, I mean square root y is going to be equal to absolute value of x right here. And the reason for this is because uh, you can't have a square root of a negative number. That would be... Uh, yeah, that would be an imaginary number, so that, that's why we have to put this absolute value here. So we're not dealing with imaginary numbers right here. So we're just dealing with this one. Now that we'll write whenever yeah, 0 is less than absolute value of x, less than delta. But now if you look at this, this is our delta, actually. So this could be our delta. So we've actually just found out what our delta is, and this actually proves that the uh, limit is true right here. So what this is saying is that if we just let delta equal to 1 divided by square root of m, so now delta and m are dependent on each other. So uh, as, you, as you can see, this is one absolute value of x less than this. Whenever you have this, 
And this is the exact same thing whenever epsilon values x is less than delta, and then we just let, let it equal to this. So now if we write it all together and summarize this, and if we summarize this, uh, we just write, well, since 1 divided by x squared is greater than m, whenever you have this epsilon value x less than this delta, and which is greater than 0, we have to find this delta, and we found it to be, well, we could just set it equal to 1 divided by square root of m right here. Thus, we this is exactly the precise definition of a limit, thus the limit as x approaches to 0 of 1 divided by x squared is going to be infinity right here. And now to illustrate this uh, definition just a bit more, I, have, I graph this right here. If this is fx equals to 1 divided by x squared, as you can see as it goes to closer than 0, it's going to go to infinity. So uh, like my other, uh, like that earlier video on the uh, precise definition of infinite limits, if you draw a line like this, we'll call this y equals to m right here. And basically what this is saying, yeah, what well, this is saying if you draw this from here, but uh, didn't draw the scale, but the, just imagine these are the exact same because it's just x, 1 divided by x squared, so it's symmetric about the y-axis. So as you can see, if you draw this line down here, this would be our alpha right here and this is our zero, and if we have x within any of this range right here, so if, if x is here or anywhere inside here, then our value is going to be greater than m here. So this would be f of x accordingly, and this is always going to be greater than, uh, greater than m whenever it's in between these two. So this is delta, this is delta right here, and we found this delta right at this point is going to be, well, zero plus delta, which equals to delta, and, and it's going to be, well, 1 divided by square root of m. So we found this value right here. So that's all it is. It's, all, it's just saying that it has to be greater than this m whenever you're within this range right here. And so if your x is over here, you're going to be somewhere here, and it's always going to be greater than this m. And this m could be anything. Even if you raise this m all the way up to here, it's going to be, now you're going to have a smaller delta. And the delta is dependent on the m, so we've proven it. So this is our proof for the limit, and thus the limit is goes to infinity right here. Well, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this uh, this useful example. Just a bit abstract. Just once you get your head around the precise definition, it's all pretty straightforward. Remember, you can download these notes in the Dropbox link below, and stay tuned for another math. E